hey, it's such a lovely day and I should be inside doing the brakes on the 37 Chevy, but man, it's just get a bit of that spring fever and uh, we thought, you know, last year we never fired up this uh, Buick and I kind of was curious if it would still run and today Miles is here and uh, it was he and I that put this back together when we did the straight eight showdown and we were kind of laughing about whether or not it would still start so that's uh, how we're going to waste part of our afternoon so uh, let's see if the 1950 Buick this is a 263 cubic inch straight eight we did a whole series on this uh, check it out on the channel if you like this engine is I think definitely the worst engine I've ever tried to get running and we had it running pretty good so let's see if it'll still go we get the man to give me a hand here He's got these handy hood removal kind of things here with the handles forward or back or whatever I don't know we need to get the new port here okay on the tips Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> that looks all right. Well, let's have a close up. Everything pretty much the way we literally backed this in, shut it off, and it hasn't run since. So Nada, right? It shouldn't be anything. No, there. there's nothing in it. It's right. gonna be dry, so we can't run it for very long, but I'm genuinely curious if it'll still go. We've got uh, probably everything we need. We're gonna hook up our will it run rig, wherever right. that is. Yeah. And uh, we'll do a like a test on the JB endurance, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. When we use the uh, hydraulic pressure to free up the engine, it actually blew the side of the cylinder out uh, and put a big vertical crack in it, which I uh, filled with JB weld because we didn't have time to screw around. And so I'm kind of curious when we finished it, it had 90 pounds, same compression as all the rest of the engine. Yeah. So uh, let's see if we can get this to go. Uh, I'm kind of curious. This engine is bad. Like this, this engine is like shipwreck bad. So let's uh, let's wire it up and force it back to life. <laughs> She's ready for a little cold air induction, yeah, I think. Right? right? We got dual. Yeah. This is easy. 500 horse. Yeah. Serviceable. No. What was the horsepower on these? Maybe I could steal these for the Pontiac. Yeah, that's right. You could put them where your bottom headlights are. Right. That's what the cool kids did, anyway. Yeah. Did we use okay. this pump? Let's back get here that. Or no? no, we ran the electric. Everything was electric. Okay. I just didn't want to cut the original fuel line. Yeah. So I will go see if we have a chunk of fuel line to wire into there. Okay. I hope that the, the carburetor is the unknown. I just hope that it hasn't been sitting too long. All right, we've got our little rig hooked up here. I actually made these for the straight heat showdown. Did you? Yeah. That's a great idea. Well, I was tired of running wires all over the place and then having to do it every time. So you got some gasoline. That's gasoline. gasoline. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's mixed with a little tranny fluid, I think. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's test uh, fuel bump. We got to make sure the carburetor will actually... Are we drawing fuel or not? Doesn't seem like we are. Let's put this on. I just straightened the hose. Okay. You gonna stay there? Yeah. Yeah. Should be. The hose has a big slit in it too, which isn't helpful. No. There we go. Okay. Now, does it actually float? Nice. The floats Close working. Close it off. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Give her a few pumps there. Right. Where's my linkage? Oh, that spring is tight. Okay. You got accelerator pump? No. Damn it. I got no. I can't hear a squirt anyway. No. There. No. Well, probably the check valves, the check balls are just stuck. Give her some. What? Tap it a couple of times. See if we can loosen something up, because otherwise it's a complete teardown. Saw a dampness. Let go. Oh, yeah, it's working. 100%, buddy. It's all needed. Unbelievable. <laughs> nice. Unbelievable. Okay. Choke closed. Oh, the choke's not hooked up to anything anymore. No. So we'll just have to treat it as a manual choke. But that's fine. I can do that. Good. That's exciting. 
You want to give it a little dump of gas, I guess. Sure. I'm gonna try cranking it with no. Oh, whoa, whoa. that should do it. <laughs> oh, big eight. It's a big eight. It's thirsty. Okay, I'm gonna try cranking with no coil. Okay. Um, oil. Should we check if it has any oil? Sure. You got a dipstick over there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have one over here. No. <laughs> like you're hoping you know that what? I the, do? The, the dipstick <laughs> might have rusted off. Something okay. tells me the dipstick was rusted right off. We may not have it. This dip. thing was full of water when we got it going the first time. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, well. Do you have a tube? Do you have anything? No. I'm just going to go for it. All right. Hold the throttle open. Give her some gas. Ready? Yeah. Clear. Yeah. <laughs> slow. Try again? Yeah, try it. Wow. So awesome. cool, I just love how it doesn't shake at all. Yeah. It's a steady runner. Definitely firing on all eight. <laughs> That's a smoky old unit. Success. That was almost too easy. Right? How long ago did we do this? Well, what year did we do this? Straight eights? Eighteen? Five years ago. 18? Five years? I think so. Was it Man. five years ago? Holy cow! Yeah, it may have been. I have to pat ourselves on the back on that one. Yeah, well done. Right? <laughs> there were cars bought new when we did this that are no longer under warranty and probably don't run. <laughs> They've been disposed already. And this is ready to do a lap in the yard. This would do a lap any time. If this other barge wasn't in the way, we could go for a rip. Right. Well, you know what I have, eh? Is yes. I have a good version of this engine, eh? Yeah, secret weapon. We should have a look. 
Let's go have a quick look and we, we can fire talk that about. One up just for fun? Yeah, if you got uh, about. Dual oops. Buick Day? Uh, well, no, I got one disassembled. Oh. I got a new, like an unbuilt one. I was talking the other one that's. Oh, the, that, that one we fired last year, yeah. Yeah. That one runs, yeah. Well, we did the head on this, as I recall. The valves were so frozen in this that some of the guides started coming out while I was trying to take the valves out. <laughs> Jim and I had to get a torch on the guides to get the valves out. It yeah, was so raunchy. Eat them all up. Thing just fires right up now. Yeah, I'll show you the one we got. It's in here. So when I bought that uh, 50 Roadmaster off my buddy Chris in Sherwood Park, uh, he uh, had a parts car or, or something that he had started rebuilding a second engine. And so but he ended up putting the big 320 into the Roadmaster, which was the correct engine for the car. And somehow along the way, he had actually done a bunch of uh, preliminary work on this and he included it with the deal. And this is the 263. And I've been doing some reading and these are actually regarded as the better engine of the two, despite being smaller. This has already been machined. The block is done. I think the head would be very easy to do if it's not yeah. done. Um, parts there, cam there. We saw the crank in the other room, ready to go. Right. Um, right. Oh, look at this. All brand new pistons in the box, ready to go. Nice. Like all done, everything done. Rings, pistons, everything ready to go. Crazy. So. This is all Buick stuff here too? I don't know. There's some of that's Hudson stuff. You see this okay. there's this Hudson engine here too, which we should probably also do. Yeah. We could just do a whole summer of making wicked engines. Right. <laughs> if only we had cars to put them in. But if we were gonna save that green Buick 1950, I would put this together because the engine in the car is shagged. Yeah. And it would need all of the work that's already done here. Right. So and I mean if we made that run, this would purr. I mean, this this could vary, and the, the, it's it's ready to go. I oiled all the cylinders because they're already honed. Hi, boo boo. Okay, good idea. And uh, and the 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 head is is good to go, and it hasn't been sitting out full of rust for a hundred years like the other engine. So I don't know. That's a straight eight update, I guess. And uh, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. And the thing is, anything that we're missing, we would just take it off of the other engine. Well, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Valve I mean, you could literally the bolt the, that head that we made would bolt right onto here. But given the choice, I would rather just put this one together. Yeah. But this looks either cool. way, we got a good cam, good crank. We got all the pieces to make it happen. Um, I'm assuming everything else is here, rods and all that shit. Yeah, there's all the rods ready to go. Greatest so. oil pan ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't Time know. Cover. Is that? That looks oh, like that's, a grenade. That's for this engine, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I got all the bits. It'd be cool to put it on a stand and whistle it together. I like that, yeah. And then, because uh, then it makes that, that 50 Buick a lot more viable project. Right. Because right now, I mean, if it needs everything and an engine, that's kind of a lot of work. It doesn't make us want to get started. No, and the thing with the Roadmaster, let's have a look. Since it's sitting right here, we can explain the difference. Yeah, see, this is a Roadmaster, so a bigger engine, longer wheelbase, and uh, a really a cool car in its own right. And my original thought was that we would combine the two cars and make one, but it would be a bit redundant because there's really nothing interchangeable. There's, despite them looking very similar, the drive lines are completely different. So, like, I can't take this engine out and put it in that two-door. Well, let's show this engine off anyway. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Okay, That's a nice looking engine. Yeah, so here you can see they look kind of similar, but this actually has no interchangeable parts with that other engine, as far as I know. Well, it looks like the same carburetor, very similar. Yeah, intake. But this is a much bigger engine. It's a totally different block. So my plan to put this drive line in that car wouldn't work. It wouldn't really fit very well. Plus, this one is not rigged up for a stick shift. This is automatic uh, Dynaflow, and the other car is three on the tree, which is I, I would prefer. Yeah. Because it's sporty. So, anyhow, uh, that's 
kind of your straight eight update for today. Very nice work in here for Yeah, Chris did a great job. It's a shame that it uh, he paid somebody to do the transmission. So what do you think happened? Oh no. Yeah. It didn't doesn't, survive. Long. Didn't survive. Tom and I cranked this thing up last fall and it runs fine. This car looks like it's made for big people. Do I fit in it? Um, I don't, the seat's not even bolted down, so, oh, but the car is made for giant people. I thought it was locked. Yeah, the seat's not even bolted down, though, so, okay. but, uh, yeah, well, I think it's, good, cause then I can slide you it could back slide it way back, it you'd have to, yeah, yeah, <laughs> lean it back, <laughs> put some white leather in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> you can put your New Yorker interior in it. brome then. interior. Yeah, put a brome <laughs> package in there. are on each side so if you pull up pull this side that side you, you open it from that side and if you pull that side you open it from this side depending on which side of the engine you want to work on and then you pull a bolt the whole hood comes off like this that's great yeah. cool eh yeah yeah there's a regular ah, same old shit <laughs> 